Are you curious about subscription types inside of HubSpot? Well, these are the things that allow you to set specific types of communication to your prospective clients or even your customers to help segment the information that they wanna receive from you. Now, when HubSpot first gets engaged for your organization, there's gonna be two default subscription types. That's one-to-one -one and marketing information. But best practices, and especially if you wanna have high engagement for your list, you need to set up multiple types of subscriptions inside of your HubSpot portal to make sure that people get the information they want and not the things that they don't. So here I've actually got an example of an email that's set up inside of HubSpot, and you'll see where this comes into play. So we've got this test email under the settings, we've got subscription type right here. So if you're new to HubSpot or if you inherited a portal, you might see that there's various subscription types in here. Now, sometimes you might inherit a portal where they're not using subscription types, and instead they might be using fields to denote if someone receives email. This is gonna be tricky because if somebody does go to unsubscribe from your organization, they may unsubscribe from everything. So as you move forward, this is gonna be a best practice, again, to ensure that you have it segmented. And then as we move toward GDPR and making sure that we're doing compliant email, all of this and make sure that that person has opted in in some way, shape or form to receive your communication. So again, this is where you're gonna see that subscription. Where this is actually set up is going to be on the back end of HubSpot, here inside of email, which is gonna be marketing under tools and then email. So here we've got configuration on the first tab and subscriptions are gonna be here on the second. So here we've got a couple of things that you wanna take note of. One's going to be the preferences page, the update confirmation page, and then the unsubscribe page. So all of these different things, you do wanna take a look at that because that's gonna be what your perspective, or I guess, regardless of who the contact is, if a contact is subscribed, these are the things you're gonna see when they go to update their preferences. Your subscription types are going to be saved here. There's been times when I've logged into a portal and I've seen like 15 different subscription types and they're kind of out of control. I've also seen ones where we got two and it's like everybody is thrown into a couple of groups. So instead of just jumping in and taking note of what's here, I want you to think about what's the most logical way for our contacts to have communication with us and how might we segment this specific thing? So this might be, you might have a newsletter. The newsletter has a very specific list. You might have events and updates that people wanna get from the organization. You might have an industry specific newsletter for A, an industry specific newsletter for B. So again, these are things you wanna think about with your strategy before you dive in and make some of these changes. Here on this page, you can see that we have four. Again, this one-to-one -one email is gonna be a default that comes with the system. And then we've got marketing information is also another default. Another quick thing that you wanna take note of here is this description under the list will show up when someone unsubscribes. So keep in mind that because this is seen, you don't wanna put things like lead list from Salesforce downloaded from 2015. Or in some cases, I've unsubscribed from lists and I'll see leads that we wanna blast in quarter four. Okay, I feel super special when I get an unsubscribe from an organization that calls me that, right? Talk about a relationship. But here inside of this, we're gonna see these, these subscriptions. Now where this shows up on the contact record is going to be over here on the left-hand side. Again, depending on how you have your portal set up, you might have a different sidebar that's customized. We have a different video about customizing sidebars, but for the most part, it's gonna be here on the left. So we have that Jack has not been part of any subscriptions. So if, I, if he was, it would show that here. I can click on view subscriptions, and again, you can see that it's not specified here. Now, I can subscribe Jack here to this specific type of um, subscription. So if I wanted to say, yes, he's going to get marketing information, we're gonna click subscribe. Now, with GDPR setup, we're gonna say, how did he actually get onto this list? So is he a client? This can be implied that he has given you permission, but again, be careful because there are various ramifications if you just go in and willy-nilly add people to subscriptions. So clients, why is this consent? Jack is a current client. All of this is saved inside of the uh, HubSpot portal, so you've got that information. Now, if I went in here and I subscribed him because he was part of an event, I would say legitimate interest other, or it might be when you import someone, you can use a workflow to automatically subscribe someone to a subscription as well. So again, we've got him subscribed to one, which means if I look over here on the left, I'm gonna refresh this, and we'll see that Jack now is part of email, okay? So when you look at a contact record, you'll see that they're subscribed there. So the other thing I wanna point out is when you do go into the email editing function, it's going to ask you to select a subscription type. And again, if what you're doing doesn't make sense, 
talk to your marketing team. If you're the marketing team, talk about the strategy of what would make sense so we can segment and send this in the best way possible. Now, if you wanna create a new subscription type, you just click on create subscription type. You can set your language and then the type here, the description, again, that's what people are gonna see when they sign up. And then you would just simply click create. So real quick, before we jump out here, we're gonna take a look at these edit pages. So this is our default subscription page. So I'm gonna click preview to see what this looks like. Now remember, this is what's going to show up to someone when they click update my preferences. So they will see all of this. So again, keep in mind, your little sentence here about your list is going to show up. And then there is an option that they can opt out of everything at once, no more calls, no more texts for breaking up and they can go ahead and update that. This page, from my perspective, is kind of ugly looking. I don't like the style, I don't like the text. You can work with the developer to update this page template so it matches your brand, matches the um, standards that you have set for your organization. So that's it with subscription types. Encourage you to use them, be smart about them, and really help customers get the information they want and then not the things that they don't. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next week.